Hey y'all, Natalie from Peg City Lovely. I'm live on location at the Muse Hair Salon here in Winnipeg where I'm about to get my hair relaxed by the wonderful Ms. Ilona Reese. She will be taking care of my hair this evening and I'm very excited to talk with her and interview her about the challenges and successes she's had with doing black hair care here in the city and beyond. She's getting ready to move on to Toronto in the next couple months but I will miss her dearly. Uh, and what am I going to do with my hair? No idea. I might have to go to Toronto and get my hair done every, uh, every four to six weeks. But we'll be talking about all those wonderful things, the challenges, the successes, and I'm looking forward to finding out a little bit more about my favorite stylist. Hope you are too. All right. Here with the wonderful Mrs. Ilona Reese, who has been my stylist for a very long time. We're about to get started with my own hair. But before we get started, I want to ask you a few questions. Nothing difficult, but this will help the people get to know who you are. So, how long have you been doing hair? 22 years. 22 years. And she look about, what, 25? <laughs> so, when you think about hair and black hair, how long have you been doing black hair? Uh, almost 22 years. So, you hear this, people? She's, she's in the game for a long time, okay? And we're about to get started with my relaxer and uh, before wh one more question one more question what is it about doing hair that you absolutely love so much well doing hair in general I just love being creative and being able to work with all different textures of hair um, when it comes to black hair specifically I'm very big on just teaching a lot of my clients how to really love their hair regardless whether we do a relaxer which I don't relax hair bone straight so it's a texturizing technique that I do um, whether it's I'm working with natural hair uh, so which, whichever realm I'm doing color anything like that so but at the end of the day I just love to help and want to make people feel and look beautiful and she does and you will see a transformation very soon however I'm going to let you talk about how this texturizing process works because back in the day, um, I just remember, you know, people would put relaxer on my hair and like comb it through until it's like straight, straight, straight. And then, you know, your scalp is burning and things are happening and your hair gets, you know, starts to break. So tell us uh, the beginning of this process. And then once we get to the next stage, we'll talk about that. But what is this beginning process and why do we do it this way? So what I do before any relaxer is I do what's called a pre-wet. So I actually, when you come in with your hair straight, like how Natalie has it now, I can't actually see where her new growth, you know, ends because her hair, she's used a flat iron to, to flatten it. So what I do is I pre-wet the hair. There's no scrubbing involved, no shampooing involved. You just wet the hair down, comb it out with a wide tooth comb, allow it to just dry naturally in the air. And that enables the hair to go back into its natural state. So I actually see the true new growth. So I don't overlap the relaxer into the previously relaxed hair. Um, in regards to the texturizing technique, I don't relax hair 100% bone straight. So depending on the person's natural texture, I will take anywhere from 50% of the curl up to 90% of the curl out of the hair. But I always ensure that there is at least... Um, if I'm going to go the 90%, uh, at least 10% of there's texture left in the hair so that the bonds are not completely broken down and that th that ensures the health, the elasticity, the strength and the hair to grow stronger and longer. So that is how I do. So it's still a relaxer I use, but it is a texturizing technique that I do. And when I say texturizing, a lot of people think that a relaxer and texturizer are usually you know, two different things. Yeah. It's it's more about the technique as opposed to to the chemical that's used. So, uh, so in some cases it can be the same chemical. Um, you know, in the stores a texturizer will be like a no lie relaxer, whereas a, you know in the salon typically use a, lie, a sodium hydroxide based lye relaxer, um, and that's what I prefer to use. Um, except I because I don't relax the hair bone bone straight, it does ensure that the hair is still healthy and manageable and beautiful at the end and ensures that the hair does not break. Okay, so you guys just got schooled. A lot of education on what is about to happen to this head of hair of mine. And so we're going to get right into it and we'll be back in a few minutes or 
I guess, a little more than a few minutes to talk about the next step in the process and a few more personal questions about black hair care and this lovely white woman that's doing it. All right, we'll be back. All right, so as you can see, the pre-wet sequence is complete and I look cray cray. <laughs> no, um, this is what happens when my hair kind of air dries after the pre-wet sequence. And now Ilona's going to tell us what the next stage is and how she came to be doing black hair. Well, first of all, um, the next stage we're going to relax just your roots. You actually have about two inches of regrowth. Mm -hmm. um, two. And uh, now had I not pre-wet you down, I would have not been able to see that regrowth. So what would have happened is I potentially could have gone, because your hair was kind of straight and smooth, I could have gone way past that two inch mark. So this way it ensures that I only relax your regrowth and I don't overlap. So that's what we're going to do in the next step. Um, and we're doing an off the scalp application. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit later. <laughs> um, also, in regards to me getting into doing you know, black hair, multi-ethnic hair textures. Um, I do have biracial children, and um, at the time when I went to school to want to learn, I, I had my first child. Um, but there is a bigger story as to why I wanted to, do, to learn it, is I was working in a hair salon in a mall, uh, typically all white salon, and uh, one day I was standing by the front desk and a black woman walked in and asked if she could get a, a shampoo and blow dry. And the receptionist told her, I'm sorry, we don't have anybody here who that could do your hair. And in my, first of all, my heart fell into my stomach because I felt that she completely got rejected. And, and in the second part was, well, why is, that, why is that possible? And how is that possible? I know that we didn't learn black hair in school, but... I, that was a confirmation for me that, okay, you know what, like, I got to learn this. Um, I've had my struggles along the way. Um, it's not, it, was, it hasn't been an easy feat being a white woman doing black hair. Um, I've had a few, you know, questions and challenges and told that, you know, no black woman's ever going to sit in my chair and no black woman's going to let me touch their hair and but I have a little bit of a philosophy on that, and, or a little bit of an analogy. I always say a male gynecologist doesn't need to have all the female parts in order to understand a woman's body gynecologically. So um, I don't really typically need to have you know, Afro hair textures to understand it. If I understand the chemical makeup of the hair, if I understand the bonds that the hair, um, how the bonds in the hair break down, the different bonds in the hair, how the chemical reacts to the bonds, um, if I understand, you know, just the, the whole, all the different textures, because there's not just one curl texture, there's many, many textures of hair, and I've been fortunate in my career to work with every single texture of hair from bone, bone straight to tight, tight, tight afro curly and all in between. So I have been very versed on all textures of hair. Um, but at the end of the day, my biggest thing is that I, I've seen from little children who have curly hair, a lot of times bi biracial children, who hate their curly hair. And that breaks my heart. And I want, and even black women who have dealt with hating their hair and hating their curls and it's the crazy, you know, they say all these really derogatory words about their hair and it breaks my heart because I think, you know, all hair is beautiful. And for me, curly hair, I love curly hair. I know I don't have curly hair, but if you see my, my page and I will, every picture on my phone is of some afro or some curly hair or something because I love it. Not because I want it. I, you know, I, it, I just love, I want to work with it. I love it. Um, and I just want women to feel beautiful about their hair and, and feel that, that their hair is so beautiful because it is beautiful. All hair is beautiful, but curly hair is definitely, you know, something to be desired. And if I, if you, as, as a white woman working, have worked in white salons, I will tell you that 90% of people with straight hair always say, I want a big afro, I want curly hair, you know, until they, we have to tell them, you know, believe me, it's not as easy as you think, but, <laughs> you know, but so it's everybody wants what they don't have. But that is the reason why I got into it, because I felt that that was very unfair to that woman, and so I made it my mission to go learn. So I made a big sacrifice and moved, went to Toronto to train and, ended up getting a lot of my training in Toronto, working in 
black hair salons and I actually at one point for two years was like Alicia Silverstone from um, beauty shop and worked in an all black beauty shop in Scarborough, Ontario. <laughs> so yeah, so that's why I, that's how I got into it and I love it. See people now, that right there is passion. Do you see how she was talking to you about the hair care? That is passion right there. That's the kind of person you want doing your hair. Not someone who is distracted or someone who is, you know, paying attention to other things. You want someone who is passionate about making sure your hair looks beautiful. So you mentioned uh, your page and I will just tell you right now uh, so you can look at it while uh, I'm getting my hair done. That it's at Ilona Reese, I-L-O-N-A-R-E-E-C-E hair on Instagram. So it's Ilona Reese Hair on Instagram. Go check out her Instagram. She does before and after pictures, of, uh, including mine, um, of all of her clients. That will allow her to, which most of them do anyways. And so check that out. You can see this is, this is no joke. Here is someone who saw a need and uh, learned and educated herself in order to help address it. So I'm very lucky. We're going to get into the texturizing technique of my hair now. And once we get about halfway through, we'll take some video and you can take a look at what that looks like. But until then, I got to get this done because we ain't got all night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, so I'm about halfway through the texturizing, relaxing process, and I'm gonna show you exactly what Ilona does. As you can see, she applies it with a comb. But it's an applicator. And it's a, <laughs> as an applicator. However, there's a reason my scalp does not burn, and that's because she's doing it on the hair not on my scalp. And I, I believe you said something about that before. It's it's about relaxing the hair, not the scalp. Right. So typically people in the past, you know, it's a, a kind of a thought process that, you know, if it's not burning, it's not working. Well, it's only burning if it's actually on your skin. So um, the theory behind that is actually I'm not relaxing your skin, I'm relaxing your hair. So it actually shouldn't burn. And for me, I have a little bit of a difficult time when I hear, when new clients come to me and um, I do their hair like in, with this off the scalp um, technique and they're like, oh, it's not burning. What, like, I don't understand. Like that should be, you know, just something that you're, you're accustomed to, which is actually, in my opinion, as a stylist, it's actually a little saddening that, you know, your your whole the whole point of you getting your hair done is to have an enjoyable, relaxing, you know, experience. Not your head burning on fire and have to you know and you and you know you're like twitching in the chair, but it's not right. It's not ready yet, so you have to sit there and get, and then possibly get third degree burns on your second and third degree burns on your hair on your scalp. That's to me that's unacceptable. So with this off the scalp application, I'm still ensuring that the re regrowth is getting relaxed. And I'm able to watch it because what's happening is I'm, because I'm using the comb as an applicator, the relaxer, I'm dipping and I'm scraping. So I'm only applying what's in the teeth of the comb. So that is ensuring that that relaxer gets on every um, section of that diameter of hair. So it actually ensures that the hair is relaxed evenly, consistently, and not burning the client. So it's a more enjoyable um, experience for them so that's how I love I, I love her <laughs> what am I gonna do when you go ah. you anywho <laughs> yeah I gotta fly to Toronto so as you can see her process pretty simple pretty easy we're about ha halfway through and oh my gosh do I ever have some new growth wow two inches this is after uh, putting my hair in braids for a, a hot second and uh, so now this is the the result of that. And I mean, there, there will we'll probably get to some, some dialogue about why I relax my hair versus having natural and all that kind of fun stuff, but we'll save that for the next right. segment. So and, uh, I'm in the final stages of my relaxer. And while Ilona and I are doing my, well, while she's doing my hair and <laughs> I just sit here looking pretty, um, you could see that it's definitely looking nice and long and beautiful. We're going to blow dry it out. But while we're, doing my hair we're also taking part in a chat which I'm going to try to maneuver here 
as you can see, right now online is the great black hair debate, talking about different uh, topics within, um, uh, you know, the realm of black hair. So this is really awesome that we're able to comment and we're going to take part in some of what they're talking about. Anything you'd like to add, my dear? Well, if you want to pull the camera a little over, I can show the, how there's still texture left in your hair from not having... The, you can see there's texture there in the hair, so there's it's not relaxed 100% bone straight, but I take Natalie to about a 90% straightness, so she still has a little bit of texture in there to ensure for um, to ensure that her hair can grow stronger good. and longer, and actually have body in her hair and not just look flat and limp like a lot of times after a bone straight relaxer, they, it takes a couple of weeks you know, for the hair to kind of start looking like it's got some volume until the roots grow in. But right now we don't have to worry about that because we leave some texture in there and then the hair has beautiful body, volume, and still maintains the strength and elasticity in the hair. So, so. so here we go. We're going to get ready to blow dry and in the meantime take part in this great black hair debate online on YouTube with the Lori and Cher show. Here we go. We are done. My hair is now relaxed. Check it out. Full of body, full of bounce, sleek and shiny. And I love it. It feels light. feels great. And I definitely got some length. Did I not? Yeah. And uh, so what, what did you, what'd you put in here? So um, when your hair, hair was still wet before I blow dried you, I put some moisturizing cream into your hair along with a... Um, argan oil serum and then I blow dried your hair straight and then I um, put in a heat protector along with a little bit more of argan oil serum just to, for that shine and protective um, moisture and protection against the flat iron and then I fl um, flat ironed you straight and I actually have a um, argan heat flat iron um, that just gives a really beautiful smoothness to the hair after we keep looking into this mirror <laughs> You guys can't see it, but we can. <laughs> Maybe we'll turn a little bit. Ooh, look at we're turning. Oh, there we go. Uh, so now you can see the back of my head. You can see that we were on my uh, laptop here um, with the great hair, black hair debate. It was a very interesting convo. It was nice to be a part of that uh, and uh, talk with some other ladies and panelists about black hair. And uh, we wrote some comments in as well. So you can definitely check out that out with the Lori and Cher show who are in Toronto where Ilona happens to be leaving me to go. Why? <laughs> because actually Toronto is where I started my career, um, like really started my career and I just feel like that's the place I need to be to expand. There's so many opportunities in Toronto. Um, even though I specialize in, you know, Afro hair textures, multi-ethnic curly hair textures, I do all textures of hair and I just want to expand into different things and get into makeup artistry and just do all sorts of things, work in film and production, whatever, whatever door is open, but the door is definitely are uh, more likely to open in, uh, in Toronto than in Winnipeg. So not that I don't like Winnipeg. I don't like the cold, but, <laughs> yeah. but she's going to miss me. Yes, I'm gonna miss you me. know, her fave blogger customer. Yeah. Um, and I guess we should probably tell people where the heck you will be in yeah. Toronto. You're going to be in the Yorkville area. Mm -hmm. I'm working at Anthony Passero salon at 114 Cumberland uh, Avenue, uh, second floor. And it's a, Brand new salon, I just opened three months ago. Beautiful salon, Good. we got a great, and it's a beautiful salon because it's, it's actually a, has a very diverse clientele, which is great, so, and, uh, and it's in Yorkville, so the fun spot. <laughs> That's where I actually started too. I started on Yorkville and now I'm on Cumberland. Well, I know myself and quite a few other ladies in the city will be missing you dearly. Um, but thank you so much for all that you do with uh, our hair, whether it's natural or relaxed or weave or braids or whatever it is, because it's all about taking care of the hair. And that's what you do as a stylist. And that's what anyone should wish for in a stylist. And I'm going to get teary eyed. So I'm going to stop now. <laughs> but uh, I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, 
segment on um, well, just watching me get my hair uh, relaxed. So a lot of more, pe- a lot more people are going to have so much more education and knowledge about this now, thanks to the both of us. So I hope you enjoyed it. And like, uh, like I said, please check out Ilona Reese Hair on Instagram. I L O N A R E E C E Hair. Make sure you check her out on Instagram. I believe she's got Twitter at Alona Reese as well. And uh, check her out at the Anthony Passero Salon in Yorkville in Toronto. And I'll still be here in Winnipeg. You'll still have me. So don't worry. And uh, thank you so much for all that you do. Any last words for the people? Um, just thank you. This was a great, uh, great experience. Thank you so much. And if anybody has any questions or even just wants to come for a complimentary consultation, just to, you know, from for me to just check out their hair, any, you know, we can make a routine, a plan, we can, anything. So you can give me, uh, give me a call at uh, Anthony Passero Salon. It's uh, 416-508-4444. She will be here until December 14th, and then she's off to the T.O. And uh, like I said, we'll miss her, but thank you guys for, for joining us and being a part of this, this special episode of Peg City Lovely. And uh, wishing you all guys a good night. Bye! Bye.